in our life because I feel like we struggle with that. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It looks like we are live. Um, hi, Joe. It's good to have you here again. I'm excited to always catch up with you. It's always a great time. And I feel like our conversations go very long, which is a good sign. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. No, happy to be here. Happy to be here too. This is, it's become one of my favorite things to do. So awesome. I'm so glad to hear that. And last time I know we did the portfolio review and like I, I think you as well, we both got like so many comments and feedback back saying people loved it. And so of course we are back to do a resume review. I know you and I, we swapped notes on this and we were both like, what should we do for the next one? And mm -hmm. we were like, I feel like we need to do this for resumes because there's too many things, like too many times you, you get resumes that are just not there even yeah. if the person is incredibly talented. So I'm excited to dig in. Are you ready? I am. And this is, to your point, this is something that um, it just never gets talked about. We spend a lot of time talking about portfolios. There's a lot of information online about portfolios, but yeah. nobody ever touches resumes. So I yeah. think this is awesome. I'm excited. And I know, like you mentioned, actually, as well, that resumes are the first thing that you know your yes. recruiter is going to see. So it, it is definitely that like first thing that you want to get in shape, um, possibly even before you really revamp the, uh, the uh, portfolio, like you mentioned. I think so, because it's the first thing anybody sees. When you apply for a job, the first thing that happens is you you either upload a resume or you, know, you send a link to it, or you send a link to your LinkedIn profile, which is essentially the same as a resume. Um, it literally is the first thing that anybody sees out of the gate. So I, I think it's tremendously important. Yeah, I'm excited to jump into that. Before we do, I know we had a couple of announcements we wanted to talk yes. about. Um, number one, for anyone who's following along and wants to take notes for yourselves or to share with the community, we have a public note-taking link that we'll be sharing in the chat. So you can open that up. It's a loop panel note-taker. You can take live timestamp notes or bookmark key you know, quotes that came up um, so that you can save those key insights for yourselves. And we'll share that. Um, with you publicly on LinkedIn as well. So you can review that after the call. Um, so Southwick just wanted to confirm that that's being sent in the chat. Okay, I'm assuming he's got it. Um, <laughs> um, Joe, do you want to, I know you had a fun freebie for us. Yes, 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 yes. We have put together for, for everybody joining us, um, we put together a free case study guidebook. Okay, it's a, it's a PDF that walks you step by step through the process of writing a case study, which is one of the most daunting things for just about everybody. Okay, if I get, if I got this question once, I've got it, you know, a million times. People are like, I just, I don't know how to write this case study, or, you know, you need to do it, and you've been sitting on it for weeks and months, and you're just avoiding it because it's a daunting task. Hopefully, I think what people will see in this guidebook, and you can download it at the link that's in the chat. Um, for free. It doesn't have to be this long, drawn out novel. It doesn't have to be a daunting task. There's a way to chop it up into small steps uh, to get there very simply. And it does not have to be complex. You're trying to tell a compelling story. You're trying to be quick about it because recruiters don't have time <laughs> to hear your life story on a project. Uh, I think it's practical. I think it's easy. And I think it alleviates a lot of the stress and pressure that people feel when they go to write a case study. So I think it'd be extremely valuable to people go to the link in the chat and download it and uh, let us know if that's a useful resource. I believe it will be. Oh, shucks. I muted myself. I was going to say, I hope, <laughs> <laughs> not, not a good thing to do in the middle of a live stream, but I was going to say, I hope after these sessions and the resources, it's like, it gets much easier for folks to find their dream job. So yes. excited to, uh, to have you put that one out as well. Um, but are you ready to dig into the actual resume review, like into the meat of this thing? Yes. All right, let's do it. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. You should be able to see um, a couple of resumes here. We have the blue panel note taker that actually talks through like where you can take notes. Um, mm -hmm. I have randomly selected, so we got a number of resumes. As you remember, even last time, the list is way longer than the time we have to. Yes. But we've randomly selected some for researchers and designers. And hopefully, regardless of if your resume is like in the random pool, and we'll keep picking those up, um, these tips are helpful for you either way. So um, this is the first one that we pulled out for researchers. 
Um, before we dig into the details, I was curious, I was thinking about this a little bit. I was like, what do you actually look for when you're looking at a resume? And I have, I've thought through this a little bit, but I wanted to get your thoughts first. Like when you look at a resume, what are the key things that you want to see as the person hiring someone? I mean, for me, the, the very, very first thing I want to see at the top. Okay. Like the, the statement that starts where in this case, she starts in my four years, but I want to see immediate evidence that answers the, to me what the core question, which is why you, okay? There are a million resumes and they're all pretty much written the same way. I wanna see something immediately at the very top of the screen that says, here's why I should spend another 10 seconds. It's just like I talk about portfolios. Here's why I should spend another 10 seconds checking this person out. Yeah. Tell me something that matters immediately. This yeah. is, people don't think of it this way, but resumes, just like I say about portfolios, are a sales pitch. You are selling yourself. Every single word here has to be selling you. Why you? What makes you different than the other 600 resumes that people have submitted online for this job listing? I mean, that really is what it amounts to. Now, do machines comb these resumes? Of course. There's no getting around that. You know what I mean? You can't necessarily fool a machine with a, a compelling story because it's looking for certain keywords. At the same time, Eventually, if you make it past that screen, a human is going to look at this and a human is going to give you just about the same amount of time as a machine, <laughs> you know, to come through quickly and be like, what, 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 what do I care? Do I care? No. So I want to see something that says, here's what I've accomplished for these other organizations that I've worked for. Yeah. Because that's why I'm hiring you, right? I'm hiring you because I need something that I currently don't have and I need to make sure that you have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. The way that I was thinking about this also was that, to your point, I would actually think about it as like, I want three things. The first thing, and I actually would love to get your thoughts on this when we go through the resumes, but the first thing that mm -hmm. I want is I want the person to make it really easy for me to visually see what I need to pay attention to. Like, yes. just make it so my eye, because especially with resumes, I feel like everyone's Resume design is a little bit different. Yep. Which is fine. It's not standardized. That's okay. But that means that every time you look at a resume in a pile of like 100 resumes, your brain is like jarred for a couple of seconds. Yes. And so the easier you can make it for me to see what is most important, the better. And so that I'd love to get your thoughts on that in terms of like visual hierarchy, like what are things people can do from that point of view? Yep. The second I thing, go ahead. Did you have a thought there? No, no. Keep going. Um, I was going to say the second thing that I find really important only because I've noticed that sometimes I'll put like a job out there. Like, let's say I'm hiring someone, um, to help us with our YouTube live streams. I'm like, okay, I want a content person and I'll put that job listing out there, but I'll get applications for like a whole other job. Like some people are just throwing their resumes in the ring. Um, yep. And so sometimes I just need to be clear that you are doing or can do the things that this role actually requires. Um, so, you know, if, if you're applying for a research job, you're not a product manager, or if you are like the reason, like you are applying for the research job. Um, and the last one, the third thing that I look for is a kind of what you mentioned as well, like why you like not generic, like I can do X, um, but give evidence. me like, evidence, evidence behind that as well. Um, but I think that makes sense. Anything you wanted to add on that before we actually dive into this specific resume? I think all three points are really important. And the second point in particular is something I want to touch real quick in case I don't get to it later. Yeah. Um, and that is in terms of making sure that, that the resume is a fit for the role. You have to, people have to, and they don't do this. And I know they don't do this because they tell me they don't do this. You have to customize that resume mm -hmm. for the job that you're submitting to. Okay. You've got to reorder in some cases um, your, your job experience, if that makes sense. All right. You have to, you have to make sure that, that, that your bullet points, maybe in some cases are rewritten to make sure that you're speaking to the job and the role that you're trying to land. It has to be as specific as possible. So you have got to adjust and move things around and change things. And in some cases, leave things off entirely if they're not relevant yeah. okay, to make sure that to your point, the, the, the person who's hiring or the recruiter or the hiring manager or whoever reads it and says, yeah, this is a fit. This person is a fit for exactly what I'm looking for. 
Yeah. People don't do this. I know why they don't do it because it's a pain in the ass and it's <laughs> <So> difficult <laughs> and it's work. You know, I mean, it is, it's not easy, especially if you're applying to a lot of jobs. If this is, it's applying for jobs and trying to find a job is hard work. It is. Don't get me wrong. It's really, really, it's a big lift, you know, but it has to be done. This is, this is the environment that we find ourselves in right now. Everything really has to be as customized as possible. Same goes for portfolios. You know, yeah. you got to rearrange your case studies. So that the most important ones come to the top. That's hard, Yeah, but it's necessary. Yeah. I will say before we jump in again, last thing, quick shout out to everyone who has sent in their resumes. Yes. Live stream. Like it is hard to go through a recruitment process. It's uncomfortable. It's a lot of work. It's stressful. So just quick shout out to all of you for even like being on that journey and putting yourself out there to get critiqued, um, which is, it's, it's not easy for sure. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm going to okay. let you start with Larissa. Like, what do you see and what are your top of the mind thoughts when you see this resume? couple things. I mean, number one, you, you mentioned layout, right? You talked about layout. That's really important. Margins here are way too small on the outsides. It's, it's, there's the, the text width is way too long. All right. It's really hard to glance through this and get chunk of information, chunk of information, chunk of information at a time. And that's because everything spans the width of the page. Give me an inch margin on all sides. And here's, I think one of the reasons people do that is because part of the bad advice circulating about resumes all over the internet is it should only be one page. Yeah. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Every day of the week, wrong. If you have experience and all that experience is relevant, it mm -hmm. needs to be there. If it's compelling, it doesn't matter if it's two pages, okay? Or even three pages. If you've been working for 15 or 20 years and you have a ton of relevant experience and good stories to tell, I'm yeah. sorry, it needs to be there. Mm -hmm. The quality of the first page is what's going to dictate whether anybody bothers to read page two and three. Yeah. Length is not the goal. <laughs> Okay. Quality, compelling story is the goal. So number one, these margins on the sides, especially need to be much bigger mm -hmm. so that those paragraphs feel shorter. The other thing is we've got three paragraphs at the top without even reading it. It's too long. Mm -hmm. I need one sentence. All right. I need one to possibly two sentences at the top to tell me what you do, who you've done it for, and what makes you better at it than anybody else, mm -hmm. essentially. So let's look at this text real quick. Um, own the planning, in place, socialization, research insights. Okay, there's part of that I like. Generate value, skills, and research. Uh, yeah, lifelong passion. Nobody cares. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the first sentence is the most important. Yeah. Okay. Um, four years is one of those things that can either, it's either going to be good or bad. My, my problem with anything under 10 is that it invites judgment. Okay. It invites a recruiter or a hiring manager to say, well, I've only been doing it for four years. I kind of knew at this. Interesting. So in this case, I, I feel like I wouldn't say that. Um, I do have a question on that one, actually. Like if you are applying at four years, you're maybe not applying for at a large company, you may not be applying for like a head of research role, like maybe at a smaller one you are, or you're applying for a research manager role or a researcher role. In that case, and I'm, I'm genuinely asking this question. Do you feel like four years of experience is like actually like pretty, it's like a reasonable amount of experience for a researcher. Um, and you're not maybe looking to run a huge team at Amazon, but like, that's okay. Or do you still feel like uh, less than 10 is just like. Perception. Mm. In other words, you, you, the dates below will tell that story. That's true. But it, it's, it's perception. There's, there's a lot of unfair scrutiny in UX hiring right now. There's a lot of, of ridiculous leaps in logic that recruiters make when they see things. Yeah. And there are a whole lot of reasons people get sort of discounted for roles. One of them, for example, is where, whenever the word junior appears on something, <laughs> that's an instant red flag. You're asking not to be interviewed. And I've said this plenty of times public, publicly. And people are like, well, my position is junior. I don't care. You don't <laughs> advertise that fact. Uh, seriously, because it's unfair. They're going to judge you and they're going to judge you unfairly. They're going to see that word and they're not going to read anything else. Mm. Now, is that ridiculously unfair? Of course it is. Mm -hmm. But you can't give people ammunition to discount you. So in this case, 
that concerns me, you know, but I like this sense. I have owned, owned yeah. keyword planning, implementation, and socialization of research insights for B2B and B2C web platforms. Yeah. That's good. I'd like to see a little more specificity to say what, what, for what types of, of products in what industry. Mm -hmm. um, but I like that sentence. The word owned is the right word. It means that you were solely responsible. Okay. I like that a lot. And it also, I would love to get something in that sentence about the outcome of that. Okay. That's why I want to kill the, the second two paragraphs because mm -hmm. they don't tell me anything about what that work did, what it enabled, what it accomplished. Mm -hmm. So that I want that first sentence to be a combination of what, what you already have here. Mm -hmm. Plus give me something about an industry and outcome. Yeah. All right. What have you allowed these companies to do? So we would kill like in my four years as a user researcher and start with this. And yeah, then because you already oh. say user experience researcher for B2B products. Um, yeah. And here's another thing. I just caught this. It says B2B products up above, but now it says B2B and B2C web platforms. Let's touch that for a second. If it's both, it's both. But if the majority of your experience is all B2B, mm -hmm. forget the B2C. Mm -hmm. Unless you're, unless you're applying for a job that's B2C. I was going to say, this is where the customization can come in, right? Like you yes. can also smartly customize your resume where there are like specific, almost like when you see a legal template and there's a blank and you just fill in the blank. And this yes. could be one of those places where it's like, Hey, I've worked on B2B XYZ. If you're applying to a B2B company, B2C, like, let's say it's like an e-commerce company, like call that out if you're applying to an e-commerce. So that could be that level of like smart customization that comes in. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Um, before we get to work experience, yeah. skills and tools, skills and tools are last on every resume. As far as I, I agree, concern. I agree. I see them. At, I'd like to see them at the end. Cause then it's a quick glance at the bottom of the page. So even, yeah, these two, even I agree, like you would kill, right? Like these are not just one line maybe that says you own implementation, planning, socialization, some customization as to where, and if you right. have, again, the customization can come in with impact where if it's like, okay, at a B2B company, I, my research helped drive like 30% increase in users or whatever, then you put that in. So right. partly customize and leave like a field open for yourself for that. Yes. The that only way that that stuff in the second paragraph shows up, okay. Any of those terms like mm -hmm. uh, research, study design, research ops, moderation analysis, yeah. If the job listing asks for those types of things, in other words, if those words appear in the job listing, must have experience with research ops, then you make sure it winds up in that paragraph or in this resume somewhere. Yeah. Okay. I would feel but, like not put it in a paragraph because as soon as, as a human agreed. bunch of text, you're like, I just want to see bullets because it's more easily skimmable. Skills, um, actually. It probably belongs in that list yeah. you know, at the end, those types yeah. of things. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree on that. Yeah. Um, Okay, let's say, okay, so we've got that. We've moved these to the bottom. That's great. Um, Here's another hierarchy piece as well, visual hierarchy. When you look at work experience and then UX researcher underneath it, UX researcher, even though it's smaller, yes, it's bold and it's sure. dominant, okay? It's, it's absolutely fighting with work experience. Now, people may be watching this and saying, well, why are you harping on visual design? Like, is that really a big deal? It is because it's what en enables people to scan. There has to be a hierarchy. Work experience has to scream at me yeah. so that I can just get to that section. Yeah. You know, Actually, so, so the, it's out of balance there, even though it's larger, doesn't mean dominant. Okay. Contrast means dominance. Weight means dominance. Do you think you would even like pull out the work experience title? Cause it's like self-explanatory, like as to what that, like, this is my role. This was my role at X company or would you keep it there? Like assuming people look uh, for it. I, I wouldn't even say work experience. I would just say experience, one word. Mm. That's typically the word that gets picked up. Mm. Um, and, and gestion systems as well. Yeah. You know, I'm look for that gonna, word. Just to your point of visual hierarchy, I'm going to zoom out a little bit just to show people. Like, yeah. Yep. You can see visually where the person's like eye goes by default. And is that what you want? Like, if you have 30 seconds to convince somebody that, hey, like, I'm great for this role, is that what you'd want them to look at? Yeah. All these weird, all these weird little trapped negative spaces all over the place. Okay. You, when you look at it this way, you can see how they're like, even the distance between the title and then the, um, the timeline 
you know, March 21 to present is all the way at the right. Mm -hmm. So you get these weird little trap spaces in these paragraphs. If you push those margins and, and don't do this left aligned, right aligned, make it all left aligned, everything. Interesting. And then you have like everything like skimmable on the, actually, do you have any, maybe at the end, we can see if we have any like templates of like visually, like in case people, for example, if you're a researcher, maybe your content isn't in visual hierarchy. If you're a designer, you should, you should do that anyway. Um, but maybe we can see if we have like a good template that we can put out for people to yeah. but not actually having to think about this. They can just plug and play with it because padding, spacing, like I kind of, Feel like those kinds of things can get hard if you don't yes. if you don't have experience playing with them. Well, let's do that. Let's let's develop a template. Yeah, I like that. Okay, that's gonna be our next our next piece. <laughs> Already getting to work on the next thing. Um, right, because we don't have enough to do. We don't have enough to do at all. Um, okay, cool. So yeah, let's go ahead and dig into the work experience one. I'm gonna again let you just carry on and I will jump in where I have additional okay. bullet. Okay, build B2B and B2B. Let's so transform away employees. I'm just reading through this. Foster, you want to value good research, quickly build a floor trust. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the other one as well. Um, yeah. I have some thoughts. Do you have some thoughts? Yeah, go first. Because <laughs> I want to see if you're going to say the same thing I am. Well, <laughs> I didn't get that far down the list, but there are a couple of things. So first thing, and this may, this may not be, I think this is a little bit more specific to this person's uh, use case. I did not know that this was a company. Like I had to, I had to figure that out by reading Macmillan. Yes. It is probably the company. So maybe if your company's name is like not immediately recognizable, um, just put it like UX researcher at um, or something mm -hmm. like that, where it's like really easy for a person to know. Like, otherwise it sounded like it was like, EDS product innovation and development sounded like it was like you were talking about like what you did or something. It's, it wasn't, it was just hard. Like my brain had to work. Yeah, um, I think if the company comes first, that changes as well. If you put the, if you put that title first before yeah. your, your job title, I mean, the name of the company before the job title, I think yeah. it clarifies that. Yeah. I think that's another good way to do that. Um, we already talked about the alignment piece. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the context. I'm actually, I don't know if it's necessary to put the context on. Maybe this is one of those things that can be customizable again, depending on like who you're applying to. Yeah. Do I, I would rather see you explain that. I would rather see that information included in those bullets. Okay. Work it into what yeah. you're talking about. But, yeah. but the paragraph up front is unnecessary. Number one, yeah. it sort of interrupts the flow. It disconnects that title. Yeah. Yeah. From the from the bullets below, so you can tell me about the company and what you're working on in those bullets. I don't think it needs to be a separate line yeah. like this. Yeah, agreed. Um, the third thing I was going to say here was like drive product decisions by delivering key high impact research findings with stakeholders in succinct and creative ways. Is like going back to like I think the thing we said up front is not really telling us the impact that you drove or like like. Is can any researcher say that they drove product decisions, gave high quality these, and or like is there a good way to fact check this? Because a lot of people can kind of say like I did great research. Like how do I know? I think right. that's what came to mind for me there. Agreed, and and that that exists throughout this resume and throughout probably you know every resume. <laughs> the formula is this, okay? For every single bullet that appears under a specific job that you had. The formula for every single bullet mm -hmm. is accomplished this by doing this. Most resumes like this one says, I did this, did this, did this, yeah. did this, did this. The preamble is missing. Yeah. Uh, made this better, made this more efficient, made this faster, yeah. um, reduced risk, reduced cost. Yeah. Right. Enabled increased profitability, whatever it is, every single one of those bullets has to start with accomplished this by doing, and then you give me, you know, high impact research findings with stakeholders in six and creative ways, whatever, which I don't love that sentence, but, <laughs> you know, fostering the company wide value of good research. Uh, so what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to add to what you said, which is so what? So like you said, like 
And there are two points here, I guess. Number one, if you don't have these data points from your previous work, you should go out of your way to get them. Like if yes. you don't know whether you're like, and this is for design research at like any job, what were the actual outcomes for the company or the business or whatever, or the product um, yeah. that your research findings, like in this case, you had like a high impact research finding. Let's say it was like about, you know, you got students to like respond to questionnaires 30% more. Like that's, you need to have that data points. So if you don't have it in your organization, you should yeah. make sure that you're getting it from the product manager who has it or whoever that actually does have access to it. And the second thing that actually you said where you were like, I don't love that sentence. Like it was like, there's a lot of like heavy words. Um, mm -hmm. I think. I think everyone feels like when they're communicating in a formal setting, you should use like formal language, which basically, again, requires your brain to do harder work. Like as I'm reading yes. 100 of these, I have to like use my brain to figure about, out what it means. Yes, exactly. And so like the simplest, simplest language, and I'm going to put this out here. We use this internally. We really like it. There's this app called Hemingway, literally based in your resume here. It'll tell you if a sentence is really hard to read and you need to bring the readability score down to like, this is like grade six, like sixth grade kids can read this and it makes sense. Yep. Like bring it down to as low as you possibly can and kill all, agree. The, all of the yellow and red sentences. Completely agree. You yeah. know, and here's the other thing. If you don't have data, that's okay too. But tell me what happened. If, if you know that you had high impact research findings, you have to know something Okay, about the value of that research. You have to be able to tell me something because obviously yeah. you know what it is. Just like, you know, um, where did I see it? The third bullet, mm. quickly build rapport and trust, resulting in detailed, meaningful responses to critical questions. Okay, I could flip that around and you could say, you know, increased uh, the validity, you know, and, and, and applicability of, of responses from you know what i'm saying i can't think of the, yeah. the language but yeah. let's say look we got better we got better more actionable input from users yeah. by asking a different set of questions right yeah. we i implemented a different way of doing this and here's what the result was um even the good research part okay so you establish weekly optional research office hours yeah. i wouldn't say optional yeah <laughs> that's true Seriously, I mean, because it's it's yeah. like, well, it was optional, which which in the recruiter's mind, they go, okay, well, nobody probably showed up. Yeah. <laughs> but, but say research officers, I like this, touch points yeah. are lying on goals and expected outcomes, but give me something in front of it that says what that enabled, what it improved, what it made better. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, I wonder, yeah, one point or one um, question, I guess, on a macro level. Mm hmm so obviously with research and design, there's the actual core skill of being able to do research and being able to do design well and, and, and actually being able to prove that. But there is an element of like both of these roles are very collaborative in nature and or like in some cases, for example, with research, you need to be like evangelizing your findings or research as a practice, depending on where your company is in their UX maturity. I'm curious again, like just to open up the discussion around this, like when looking at a resume because I've heard people actually say this that like when I was hiring a researcher I looked for people who could work with the rest of the team or I looked yes. for people yes so is that something that everyone should because this is an like I saw this point too and I was like that is really that's actually pretty cool you made an effort to like establish like um collaboration with the rest of the org but do you look for that up front is it a bonus cherry on top like how do you think about that I think it's critical I think it's critical. And, and those are, when I talk about outcomes, that's kind of what I mean. I don't just mean product outcomes. I mean, how did this, how is it being used? How's the work that you've done? How's it being used in your organization? Yeah. Okay. How did you, if, if there's research being done, the big challenge as everybody knows is to get non-design, non-product people, you know, executives, middle managers to actually pay attention <laughs> and <laughs> use that research and, and, and implement it somehow. Yeah. Okay. What happened? A big part of this job is bringing people in. So if you were able to tell me that you increased stakeholder participation in research activities, you know, if, if there was greater adoption mm -hmm. um, 
of the findings yeah. that you got through research. You need yeah. to tell me that if you're involving people and you're bringing everybody along the train and they're all realizing the value of it, you need to tell me that, Yeah. you know, yeah. if you, if you simplified the presentation of research findings in order to get stakeholders to actually listen and hear what you're saying, yeah, that's something worth talking about. And I've had yeah. plenty of people tell me that they say, well, I don't have any, I don't have any stories. And I say, all right, time out. Tell me, think about the last job you had. Tell me at least two or three stories, just about times when you felt really good about the outcome of your work. Just tell me a story. Don't stress over details. Just tell me the story. And they talk about something that they did. And here's what happened. And people reacted to it this way and enabled us. And I'll say, see, you just told me a story that has clear outcomes attached to it. It's not data. Yeah. But this is a clear outcome. Everybody has these stories. We just don't think of it in this way. This, like I said, it's a sales pitch, but it's also, it's a storytelling exercise. Yeah. Tell me what you did, who you did it with, who you did it for, and how it helped people. That's yeah. it. Yeah, agreed. Everything is sales. <laughs> yeah. um, in the interest of time, I do want to move to one more resume. Yes. Uh, we have a design resume open here as well. And we have a couple of questions that have come in. So I want to like try to move through this one and then um, give a little bit of time for the questions as well. Um, do we want to start with the visual, like zoomed out since we're already zoomed out? Do you want to start with the visual element of it? And then we can jump into like the actual content bit by bit. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of color. Start. Yeah. <laughs> like this is my eye is going by default to two things. I will say like it's going to the color, which is like dates. It's like, I don't know if that's what you want to highlight. Um, this might be important, like your GPA and stuff. That's cool. The other thing it's going to are these like bullets. Like my brain is just because I think it's in the center and they're like bolded. I'm around. going right there. It's like what I'm looking at. And that has no information about why we should hire no. you. So <laughs> visually, I would, and especially because it is a design resume, I would like think about it like any, if we said this with portfolios, for portfolios as well, um, think about it like a design project. Think about how you would design it so people's attention goes where you would want, just like you do with product. Um, yeah. But yeah, anything else you wanted to add to that? In terms of yeah, um, two columns. It's tough in the best of situations. Okay. It's always going to be tough just because there's a lot to look at and your eye bounces around all over the place. It's very difficult to maintain yeah. hierarchy. If you're going to do two columns, yeah. you really have to do three quarters and a quarter. Yeah. Right now, these columns are almost equal width. Yeah. They're just close enough that they're not separating. And that makes them, it makes it difficult to sort of go back and forth. Yeah. Um, so that's that left column needs to be a lot narrower. If you're going to do a secondary column, it's got to have little bulleted, very, very simple, less wordy information. And in it. it really has to stand apart from yeah. the meat of the resume. I want to echo your point about these, these dots. <laughs> They're in my way. They're distracting. <laughs> yeah. Right, let the negative space do the separating there. Um, and also, if you, here's the other thing about if you're going to do two columns. Your headlines in both columns can't be like this. All right. They got to be on the same baseline. So recognition has to be on the same baseline as products, projects. If that means there's extra space on top, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. The only way I can scan this is if I've got common reference points that don't move. And in yeah. this case, that is your headlines. Bang, 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 bang. When they're all over the place, certifications and interests are like this. And I think this to me feels like someone's trying to pack a ton of information on one page. Because yeah. I've gotten that same advice to get it on one page. No, <laughs> make it readable. Make it easy for me to scan. Fast doesn't mean length. Again, I will say though, when we say, if you say multiple pages, like I don't think I would have time to read through multiple pages. So usually no what, one's going to read it. You're what somebody scan. needs to know can be said on one page. It's I would rather like, instead of like, yes, if you can't make it readable on one page, make it like, more, but I would actually rather you cut enough stuff that what really matters fits on one page because no one's gonna go to page two. Um, so that's kind of my thinking on that one. I do want to. I think I was looking through a couple of these before. Just I think I saw one. This one also has two columns, 
there's a lot of text, but I feel like see the difference though, th- th- yeah. that right column is very, very thin. I and say- I also think it's better when the, when the most important stuff is on the left, like yes, this one. I agree. I was going to say, so I just wanted to open this one up to say like, in that sense, like the columns work better here. So you can do that if, if you really need. Um, yeah. But just like you said, like I prefer it when skills and tools are right at the bottom. So then it's just in the hierarchy of like where I want to look at this stuff. Yes, this is much better. I do have a tendency to glance at the bottom of the resume to see like, okay, like I, like I expect almost like the skills and stuff to kind of be there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good example. Are you that good Scott to... Smith resume is a good example. Yeah, let's let's jump into this one though. Okay. Um, yeah, same problems with hierarchy. I mean, th- those dates are, are practically the most important thing because they're bold and in color, you know, yeah. which changes the degree of contrast. It's not really about the color, it's about the contrast. Yes. And they're bigger. <laughs> <laughs> they, they appear to be bigger. I know it's the same font size. Yeah. Um, that's minimal information. That's the least important piece of detail yeah. there. Yeah. Um, it then goes into, okay, so this is the company, the role. And then website and mobile app designs, UX research and design, work in cross channel, teams and take line meetings, worked on live projects. I think still the same issues we talked about last time, where it's like, give me okay, value first. You this. Yeah, you did this great. What did it actually achieve? There's a link here. I actually don't know what this link is going to be. What do you, I'm, I'm let's little, see. Let's see. It's a little bit of a gamble. We'll find out. Is that no? Is the website that they mean? Yeah, don't do that. Take that out. Yeah, I'm confused also. If it's a case study. If it was a case study explaining what you did and how you did it and why it's valuable, yeah, that's great. But I, I don't need to see. And there's no context here. Like, why is this link here? It what was is a little bit like, should we click on this? I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, I, I, I would not do that unless you have to have an extraordinarily good reason. Yeah. To give somebody a link to do that. So um, I would not do that. He, he, no, he does something. The second one I'm seeing now, Newton school, increased rate of response by more than 50% within two months. Yeah. That's your first sentence there. That's the first part of that sentence. Forget creative planning, email campaigns, blah, blah, blah. You start with increased rate of response by more than 50% within two months by doing what? Yes. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. And I like to point also about like where you have numbers, use them. If you don't have numbers, still give some kind of like quantification, like, or just some kind of like outcome. Um, qualitatively of like what you what you were able to achieve also because of the thing now I'm getting a little distracted and wanting to look on the left do you feel like we need I feel like this may be I'm actually not sure maybe the high school and that's the university so then you can just cut that like I don't need that yeah I don't know I honestly don't know what the second one is I also don't know what the 82.8 percent is I think that's like that's the graduating like the it's like the score they got when they were graduating. Um, oh, see, I'm, I don't have any context for that. So I can't really comment. Um, yeah, this two, two columns within columns. No, <laughs> I know. I was, I was <laughs> scrolling to that one just to get your reaction. Here's um, another thing too. Let, let's pick on this for a second. Yeah. See where it says soft. Where? Sorry. I don't know where to where communication, like leadership oh, here. Is, okay. is, is, is a, yeah, is an, an item yeah. under that headline, but it's on the same line as a headline. <laughs> Headlines stand by themselves if you can do that. But yeah. again, don't do two columns, period. But I would also say like, do you find it useful when people put like communication and like, no, because I'm like, mm, I don't know, like you're saying that I don't, this doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah, I would, I would get rid of that entirely. Yeah, yeah, I would cut this whole section. I would put it more in the bullets, like you said, like, how yes. did you actually use context to change something? Um, I do think it can be helpful to maybe have that for like some of the like okay you know how to do research or something that's right so yeah, if you're flexible if you have excellent communication skills um show me how that manifested in the work that you did in each one of these places i agree with you put it in the bullets what do you feel about recognition i'm a, a little unclear about what it is but it seems like it's contests and like college festivals and stuff like that <laughs> um presented and published research people this is interesting I think that- Go ahead. If, if you were, because I saw a couple of internship things here, so I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, I feel like this person is, doesn't quite have a job yet. Yeah. Um, is maybe just right out of school. Yeah. So I kind of get it. You need to have something there that says, you know, here's what I did. So if you have a published research paper, I mean, that to me kind of is a big deal. Um, yeah. I would simplify it. I have a I would, in other words, I would get rid of presented and just say published research paper. As a yeah. researcher, that's that's relevant. Okay. Yeah. You want to say like, okay, 
person's young, they've had a, a, a paper published already. That's cool. But there's probably too much detail there. Yeah. Presented at I can not needed, organized by not needed. Um, unless it's relevant. I don't know what I, I can't for is. So even I, I, unless even that's I don't know, but, I, but like that, that's the point. Like if you're, if we are like the ones that are hiring and we don't know what I can for is probably not important. Um, I would kill the college festival. Thing. Agreed. Agreed. Um, you're like telling people <laughs> you know, that you're, you just graduated. Don't do that. Yeah. yeah don't advertise that fact. I don't agree. advertise that fact. Um, certifications. Would you keep, how do you feel about certifications actually? <sighs> Here we go. Um, <laughs> oh, hot button item. Is this the? I feel like I saw this on the top of your like one of your things. It's like boot camps. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna ruin yes. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to say that word. That's okay. I'll be polite. Um, I think that the problem is is with the word certification. There are certain countries, um, the U.S. is not one of them, um, mm. who offer true certification. And, and the one country that does it with an actual board certified review is, is escaping me. And I think there, there are maybe two or three countries that do this. Most don't. Most certifications through Google, through LinkedIn, um, through Coursera. Uh, yeah. This is, it is not certification. All right. People use that word and some employers don't know the difference. I get it. But it's not a certification, okay? You're not a lawyer or a doctor or an architect where a board of independent peers has to review your work and say, yeah, you are good enough to do this job. Yeah. These are not certifications. They are a certificate of completion. It says you watched the videos, you took the course, you showed yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. It says nothing about your ability. And I think students in particular and people new to this industry and people who have been around for a while, yeah. Place way too much importance on this idea of why well, have these certifications? You and 80 million other people, <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. You got to tell me that the meat of your resume has to be, here's what I've done. Yeah. All right. And even if it's project work or student work or it's a published paper, that has more weight. Yeah. And more relevance. Okay. Um. I don't know. I mean, some programs are more rigorous hmm. than others. You I know what I mean? Thinking They're... about it, yeah. Like, would you keep it? Like, especially if you are trying to break into UX. Yeah. So obviously, and this is not a ding. Like, you obviously may not have like ten years of experience because you're trying to break in. Of course. So that he's he's sense. right. He's including things that are that are relevant. I agree yeah. with that. The only thing I would say is I, I think there, are, like I said, it depends on the program. For example, mm -hmm. there are programs. Um, who it, it technically it's called a certification, but there's, there is sort of rigorous testing uh, and approach that happens. And this is going to sound a little self-congratulatory, but um, <laughs> Sophia Prater and I did a course on OOUX. It's on Udemy right now. Sophia offers a certification in OOUX. Yeah. But the difference between what she does and even what Google does or what some of these larger places yeah. do is that she's really rigorous. <laughs> it's a difficult prog program. Anyone who's ever taken certification with her will tell you it's hard. <laughs> and there's, and you kind of have to be able to do the work in order to get the certification. Yeah. So I think some programs are more rigorous than others. But do you think everyone who is hiring knows that difference? I don't think so. Yeah, I feel like No, and I think it doesn't mean a lot to a lot of companies. Yeah. It really doesn't. Yeah. So you might get lucky with somebody who has, who knows what that is, but you may not. So if you can, because there's a lot of really good internship experience here. What I would actually do is I'd move this down first of all. Education is not, it doesn't have to, since you have so much work experience. Yeah, give me your experience first. I agree. Yeah. Uh, give me these, this stuff first. I'd build these out more. It looks like there has been like outcomes that have been driven. I talk about that. I talk about the collaboration, like all of those things. Um, that you've actually done. So I'd make sure that more happens inside these buckets. Move these bits to the bottom, yes. education, skills. To your point, like this could be interesting. As you get more experience, I would cut it out because it's it's about film controversy. So it may not be like super relevant unless you're applying to like Netflix, which is like, then it makes sense. Um, and then the projects, I don't think we've had a look at those entirely. Let's talk about student work for a second in general. 
Yeah, uh, let's do that. One thing that I, I often counsel people to do when I'm doing coaching sessions is you can call this proposed work or speculative work as mm. opposed to student work, mm. especially if what you're tackling is for a real organization, mm -hmm. you know, um, or, or it's a real product, let's say. Now, if you're redesigning, we've talked about this, Apple or Google or Spotify, like that's no good. It's not going to help you because no one's going to believe that, you know, you were, <laughs> you had a shot at designing something for Apple. It's just not going to happen. But you can, in, in this case, like I'm reading these things and I'm thinking, okay, like Swiggy UX, for example, I don't know what that is, but it yeah. sounds like the, it's an actual thing. It's an, it's, it's like a, it's like Uber Eats basically. Okay. So you could say, you could, you could say, you know, proposed, you know, speculative work or proposed improvements to yeah, whatever and frame it that way. Instead of saying outright saying, this is just student coursework. Yeah. Would Make you it as real as you can for me. Though in general, instead of doing like, maybe like completely speculative work, like do something with like a real organization, even if it's a small one, like that, you know, like a friend. Oh yeah. If you can do it, absolutely. Business that's trying to build a website like that is yeah. really meaningful. Um, versus like picking up an already really well-designed app and then being like, oh, we, you know. And, Agreed. You could, yeah. if you found a business, okay, down the street from you yeah. and felt like, okay, they're, they're missing the boat. I looked at their website. I looked at their ordering process or their app, you know, where yeah. you order by phone or something and you improve it. Yeah. And then you actually go to that organization and say, yeah. look, I did some work on your, on your, your website. And here's how I think it could be improved. It could probably impact your business in some ways. Even if they don't use that, right? Even if they don't hire you, you can still put mm. that on a resume and in a portfolio because guess what? You did the work and you did it for an actual company. It is real. It's legitimate. It doesn't matter whether they hired you to do it or not. Yeah. You did the research, you did the work and here's what it is. Yeah. Um, last thing I wanted to uh, chat on is the interest piece. I actually like seeing that in resumes because it makes the person like a little bit more human yes. and i like can see sometimes i'll see something that and this is a like this is a shot you want to take because if i'm like oh i also love photography like i'm like intrigued to learn more about this person um or like you know some of these things i don't yeah i don't have a problem the, with that yeah i don't love how much space it's taking so i would again like put it like like it could be a sentence yeah give me a sentence exactly you can give um, me that in a sentence and you can write that sentence in a way that that sort of Fun. makes it a little more personal, right? Instead of just listing those attributes. What's your personality into? Yeah. Give me something that tells me a little bit about who you are. And I've seen examples of, you know, people who've done that really well. There's a little bit of humor, you know, yeah. attached to it in some cases. Yeah. I sometimes think that's actually like the hardest sentence to write really well because you're like, it is. To... Yeah. <laughs> um, it absolutely is. I know we have actually already gone over time and I have a call in like 10 minutes, but I wanted to take some of the questions that yes. have come, um, I think, Satvik's and putting them in chat. So I'll just mm. start at the beginning. Hi, Joe. What contact details should one put on a resume? Um, you want to take that first? Yeah. You need, I mean, you need email, phone number, social media. If, if you have a link to a website where your portfolio exists, I mean, yeah. that should be first. Um, those things are critical. Anything that helps prove in terms of social media, right? It has to be something where someone's going to go there and they're going to see what you're sharing publicly. That sort of demonstrates your knowledge and your critical thinking ability, um, your attention to detail, any sorts of things. So it can't just be like, hi, here are my socials. Yeah. There has to be something at the end yeah. of that URL that impresses me. Yeah. No, right? it's if I'm going to look at your posts, it has to be impressive. This person has kind of done that well in the sense that they have that email, the phone, um, yes. they're behind. So you have their work there and their LinkedIn. I actually look for people's LinkedIn often. Cause I just find always easy to like skim through and on like formatting a standard. Like I can see what, you know, what they've been working on. Yeah. Let me say this before I forget it. Yes. All the things we're talking about here, right? Yeah. All the improvements that you and I have talked about for resumes. Once you do that, you do the exact same thing to your LinkedIn profile. Yes. yes. You change all those bullets and everything the exact <laughs> same way. You've got to make the same pitch. Yeah. Right, in both places. I want to make sure we touch that. Yeah, no, I think that's an important one. And also because like people will organically find your LinkedIn. Even if you, like I said, if you put your resume, if there's a LinkedIn link, I would click on that. So it better be like at the same level of, because that might be where I consume a bunch of things. Yeah. Yep. Um, 
contrast and scannability. You want to touch that? Yeah, I was going to ask it out loud. So, so contrast and scannability are extremely important, but could it affect the ability of resume scanners being able to read your resume and approve it for a recruiter to see? I actually don't have a lot of experience using a, <laughs> like a scanner. Like I look at the resumes usually if I'm hiring someone. Um, but I would it's assume like, yeah, it's text. Like if you have better contrast and scannability, it should be easier for the machine to pick up yes. data, not harder. Um, so the better your hierarchy is like, yeah. Agreed. I would, I would assume that. Um, I've heard off and on, I can't attest to this, okay, but I've heard off and on that multi-column things sometimes, depending on how that document was created and how those columns are created and in what software application, like Word versus something else, that the columns break. Yeah. And, and the ingestion device actually mixes content from both Ugh. columns. I can't verify that, but I've heard <laughs> it more than once, all right, enough to give me pause that you all should look into this. Okay. Or and, like and, basically a safer route to go is just to not have multiple columns. Just yes. put it like all in one, put the most important info at yeah. the top and like those nice skills. Yeah, but contrast and sizing and all that stuff will never impact. It'll, it'll never make your resume less scannable. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I agree. If it's easier for a person, to read, it should be easier for the machine as well. Um, in the early days of my career, pre-UX, it was hammered home to put an interest section to put a personal touch, is this still relevant today? I think so. It is, but it's got to be quick. It's just like we just yeah, talked. One about, sentence. You know, to your to your point, I think it's important. And um, I would say it's important to see the person. Like write it, leave it, come back to it after two days, rewrite it, leave it, come back to it until you're like happy with it when you come back to it. In yes. day two, and you're like, actually, this reads really. It's it is who I am. It has personality, and it like says something about me. And I would say that maybe for the entire resume, actually, because it's really hard to write well. So you need to give yourself time away so that when you come back to it, you're like, oh, that's not good. Um, yeah. Be able to yeah. rewrite as you need. <laughs> um, do you want to take the one about OOUX? Oh, yeah. It's funny. I didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mentioned that I, I would. And, I'm gonna t and the reason I would is because, again, I think Sophia is very rigorous about the way that she goes about this. And because I have personal experience, you know, with her and with OUX, I'm inclined to say yes. And that's simply because I know the, the diligence that's there. And anyone who looks into that yeah. uh, is going gonna, is gonna to see evidence of that. Anyone who looks at, at her, how she goes about doing what she does, I think is going to see the value of that. So I agree. Um, what was the next thing? There's one more bit about OOUX if you want to like just close that topic out. Okay. Do people reading your resume know? Maybe, maybe not, but that goes for anything. There are lots of certification programs that it's, it's a mixed bag as to whether anybody knows what any of these things are. Yeah. So I think the more varied your, your skill set is, the better. You know, and I'm not, I, when I talk about certification, I'm not saying you can't include those things. I'm just saying you got to be careful um about using that words and and more to the point you need to be need to temper your expectations just because you took a google course and you now have this thing that says you have a certification you don't it guarantees you nothing you know it's it's not going to be the sole determining factor of you getting a job your work experience and all the things that we've talked about today that is what carries the day certifications are are, are this important in the grand scheme of things so put them at the bottom and <laughs> put them at the bottom yes. and line with your skills and your, so if you do want to include it, if it is a rigorous program. It's like education. Okay? It's like it's, education. I would just put it under education. I wouldn't even yeah. call out certification. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's a good point. Um, and there's one more. Um, what about voluntary work? I designed mm -hmm. and had accredited a coding course for primary eight children. I'm also a governor of a local school. Do I include these? Absolutely. I would like to see that. I think it's absolutely. Kind of you're you're telling me that you're telling me that you you did something, all right? There was a there was a a problem to be solved. Yeah. There was a solution that was developed. There was a thing yeah. that was built, <laughs> and hopefully, there's outcome attached to that, right? Yeah, yeah. I would say though, I would depending on how relevant it is to your job. Like if it's super relevant to the role that you're applying to, like I volunteer. Yeah, it has to tell a relevant story. Yes. Then I put it like maybe in your bulk of your like experience, like somewhere there. If it's like, if it's not related to your job, like this seems like, like um, a, gov a governor or a local school is probably like maybe slightly aside, 
I think it's similar in that case to like the interest section where you should add it, but add yeah. it maybe towards the bottom because it isn't what will make that like make people think, oh yes, they can do this job. But it is what gives you like people are like, oh, like you're doing something good for the world. It's, right. It, call right. it out. It's a good thing. The, right. The project should appear there, right? Because yeah. the projects, just reading that makes me think that there's a UX improvement story to be told there. Yeah. You yeah. Know. Yeah, for sure. So I, I agree with all that. I think those were all the questions I have. We have made it just in time for my next call. Yeah. So do people have the link? Reminder, there's a case study guidebook okay. that we are giving everyone um, for free. Did they, they all have that URL somehow? I think they do, but I think let's reshare it. So um, Sathvik, if you could send that out over. Um, this is a, an ebook to help you, um, again, with, the, with how to build a compelling case study, um, so it's a freebie that we're getting via Joe and we just wanted to make sure that everyone has access to it yes. in your journey of getting to that amazing job. Um, it's another, another rung to help you get there, um, uh, more easily. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, wrapping up any final thoughts, anything else that you want to add on? Other than just to hammer home what we've, what we've said already. Okay. This is, I know it's just a resume. It's a sales pitch. <laughs> you need to relentlessly scrutinize every single word and every phrase and every sentence and say, is this working for me? Does it differentiate me? Does it communicate to somebody? Here's what I've accomplished. Because what you want them to see is here's what this person could accomplish for us. Yeah. That's why you include all that stuff. And again, if you don't have data, I don't care. Tell me a story. Give me something that changed, improved, was made better, whatever the case may be. Even if it feels a little thin to you, tell the story anyway. Yeah. These things matter. Yeah. And I think we said this at the top of the, se top of the session. We're going to say it one more time. If you are in this journey, it is hard. Um, we acknowledge that. Kudos to you for showing up, for putting in the work. That is yes. already a big step. Yeah. And it does take a while to get jobs. Like I would say like in what I've seen, it can take like six to 12 months easy sometimes to... Yeah find a job yeah. that you are happy with. So um, that is a tough thing to go through. So just kudos to everyone who is showing up, who's putting in the work and thank you for joining the session. We we're so glad to be able to help. Absolutely. Very honored. All right. I'm going to end this one, but it was wonderful doing this again with you, Joe. As 